Greg, we're here at Herco in the UK. Uh, you've travelled over from the US. I'd just be interested to get your uh, current opinion on how business is for Herco at the moment around the world. Yeah, so uh, in 2019, obviously, we're experiencing as uh, the entire industry is a little bit of a slowdown. Uh, however, Herco has positioned itself, because we've been through this number of times, to be very agile and resilient. And so we're able to make changes very quickly to be able to scale the business forward and back to adjust for a cyclical uh, economic cycles, both up and down. So uh, we look at this as an opportunity when we see any kind of slowdown coming, because this typically is where we invest more in R&D and we provide um, innovative features so that when we come out of the slower periods, we have products and services uh, that are ready to go that we can offer our customers uh, where many of our competitors have cut costs and they've reduced their uh, R&D and engineering um, expenses. And what are the good markets for you at the moment geographically? I mean, is Europe, is Europe performing better than the States? China, obviously, you know, where, where are your strengths and where are your weaknesses around the world? So what's really nice is that we've tried to create these multiple pillars of support uh, worldwide. Um, and so uh, the, the US, Asia and Europe are, are our three pillars. And obviously, uh, uh, Germany is our biggest market and normally is, is, the, uh, is the division that sells the most machines and also, you know, makes the most amount of uh, revenue or turnover for the company. Today, we're, they're experiencing, obviously, a little bit of a slowdown, but what's nice is that some of the other pillars, the UK and the US, continue to be fairly strong. And so, uh, what we would like to think is that we won't ex experience a, um, a, a coincident slowdown everywhere, and that as long as we can manage that amongst those pillars, that ensures that we sort of continue to grow and we keep pace with the industry. Uh, it's quite an accolade, though, for you to have such a strong a position in the German market when there's so many machine tools manufactured there for you to kind of break into that market and do so well what do you put that down to well you know I think they've created a very uh, good brand reputation over the years we don't typically compete for price uh, in those markets and so uh, the value of the machine tool and the control um, you know has been built out of the innovation and the technology and the software enhancements that uh, that go into it and so they are certainly a, a key driver and a key market for determining what continues to go into the control and um, and obviously you're right I think some many of the German machine tool companies set the standards for which we need to be able to compete or exceed in the future and the US and the uh, UK market benefit from that type of uh, development. Is there a specific sector that you, you are strong in when you look around the world? You know, aerospace is obviously uh, you know, a, a global industry, the automotive side. Is there anything where you, you channel most of your R&D into? No, from a, from a uh, customer demographic or industry section, uh, we, we do not. And that's what makes us a little bit special because, again, it creates a resilience for us that we're not dependent on the automotive industry or just on the medical aerospace. Uh, we create a machine tool that can be used in almost all those segments and our customers right now are broken up so that there isn't one segment that dominates sort of the consumption of our machine tools. So, so the answer is that when we tend, to, uh, we tend to try to appeal to all the customers in a more generic sense and uh, that gives us this resilience to not be affected so much by any cyclical downturns that occur. Which is why you're doing well and we often talk at MTD about the fact that it's hard to improve hardware these days and most of your benefits will come from software because the hardware's got to such a level that you know any gains can now be made by making controls easier to use, making them more powerful. This is a big belief of Herco's, isn't it? It's one of your, your main strengths. It is, obviously. We have the barrier to entry really uh, into this market without being a Me Too competitor is the development uh, of the vertically integrated uh, control structure and software. And that takes years to be able to do. And, um, and so, so you're absolutely right. That's something that we, we tend to take a lot of pride on, and that is our differentiator in the markets. Uh, you must project, you must look a few years forward. Where do you see the whole of manufacturing around the world in a couple of years' time? Well, you know, it's interesting. I just came back from a forecasting conference, and uh, it, it's, it was far more optimistic than I expected. So, you know, uh, barring some short-term cyclical uh, months where we may have a little bit of a slowdown, it looks like the next decade is going to be pretty positive. So we're pretty excited about what we're going to be able to achieve and do. And Herco is going to continue to add more products to its portfolio, expand in regions and markets where we don't currently exist today, and continue to develop and innovate our software uh, at the rate that we've been doing over the last 10 years.